Tuesday and we are going to review the five or six questions that were on the Google form attendance form yesterday, that mini quiz. Um, we decided to not put them in Aspen, not count them as a grade. It was a really good um, first shot at seeing where people were with proofs and where people needed some work, where the confusion was, and um, just with some overall questions. So let's look at this first one here. The question said that you had parallel lines, so you weren't assuming that these were parallel, but the problem did say these were parallel. And you see the transversal being cut through here. So what we have appears to be alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are congruent, so that means they are equal to each other. So when you go to solve this, I'm going to take away 2x from both sides. And I'm going to end up with x plus 20 equals 60, and then to isolate for x. I get 40. And look, there it is. And I think I counted just in my period 2 and 3 class, I think there were like 15 or 20 people that picked D. But that's not the answer. It's a little bit of a trick, but this was a region's question and that's what they do. So what they actually asked you for was, what is the measure of angle AEF? AEF is right here. So now that we know that X is 40, I'm gonna plug in 40 for X. Two times 40 is 80 and 60 is 140. So this entire angle is supposed to be 140 degrees. So the answer choice was A. Never trust the picture because it does look like it might be acute, but it's just a representation. And make sure they didn't say solve for X. Always look at the actual question because yes, X was 40, but that's not what the final question wanted. Tina and her isosceles triangle scarf. So if you look at the triangle the way it's represented here, you have the two legs that are equal, which means the two base angles must be equal. So if this is 42, what must this be? 42. So that's Y. So you're looking for a choice where Y is 42, and there is really only one that has that. So you really, if you started with Y, you didn't, you had to start with Y you really didn't even have to go find that 96 was X because there was only one choice that had X as 42. I think what may have happened is people thought this was 42, their eyes saw the 42 right here and a lot of people picked A. So be careful there. Now what made this problem tricky was they almost look like equilateral triangles, but we can't assume that. So if we have triangle a, B, C over here. And I made those particular, um, particular colors for a reason. It says that A, B is the same as D, E. So A, B and D, E are the same. See that right there? So I'm gonna make those both red. Then it says angle A is the same as angle D and angle B is the same as angle E. So what must be happening here, is you can fill in the missing pieces, this has to be the green one, and this would have to be the blue one. So you could do this with patty paper, or just redraw. You took our new picture here. See how that matches right up? So now, don't look at this one, look at the two that we have, because now they're sitting right next to each other. If that helped, I'm happy. If not, let's just go mark our picture now. AB is the same as DE. Angle A, we already have marked, is the same as angle D. And angle B is the same as angle E. So what do we have here? 
what postulate or theorem can be used to prove the two triangles congruent. Angle, side, angle, right in a row. And spoiler alert, this is the question that prompted us to finally decide not to count the quizzes. This is an awesome question, but it might be a little bit too early to count this one on a quiz because it's got a lot of things in it that we have talked about um, and we will need to know this so it's totally worth going over here. So it says here that AC bisects BAD. Can you bisect an angle? This is the AC thing that's bisecting angle B to A to D. So that big pink angle there, B to A to D, is being bisected by this spear coming through here. Bisect means to cut into two equal angles, or two equal parts. And since this was one big angle, this thing divided it into two equal angles. It bisected it. So now we know we have two congruent angles right there because that's what a bisector made happen. It also tells us that angle B is the same as angle D. Right, so we know that much so far. What else do we know? You might say nothing. That's all they gave us was this and this. True, that's all they gave us. But anytime you have a shared wall like this, side AC here is the left side of this triangle, and side AC is also the right side of that triangle. They share this side. So we call that reflexive. So we can go ahead and mark that even though it didn't say it. So now we have to decide, now that it's marked correctly, what's the right postulate. If I had an angle here, a side here, angle here, side here, angle here, side here. There's your six parts. I can't skip two. I'm not allowed to skip two parts. So if I go this way and I say angle, hmm, skip, skip, side, I can't skip those two parts right there. So I must have to go the other way. Angle, one skip, angle, side. So that's why it's angle, angle, side. That one is tricky to see. Angle, angle, side is just tricky to see. This one asks, which statement is not valid for proving two triangles congruent? We talked about side angle side. We talked about angle side angle. We just did the last problem was angle angle side. There is no such thing as side side angle because what would happen if you wrote SSA backwards? You would have AS. I'm not gonna do it because this is a recording and it will be there forever. But we talked about how that terribly nasty word cannot be a postulate in math. And if you write it backwards, it's just the same thing <clears throat> going the other way. So SSA is never the answer, neither is ASS. And this last problem, it wants us to know which one of the following choices down here could not be a way of transforming M, which is this goofy shape, onto M prime, which is this goofy shape. Now, they didn't label any like corners, like that's not point A, because we wouldn't know if that's point A or if that's point A. So they're kind of giving us freedom to decide what the top and what the bottom is here. So which one could not be. Let's try the first one. If you rotate this 180 about the origin, it does line up perfectly. So that one does work. A reflection across the x-axis and a reflection across the y-axis. If you reflect this over the x-axis, 
you end up right here. And then if you reflect it over the y-axis, you end up on the red one. So that one works. A reflection across the y-axis and then a translation of two down. Let's see. If I was gonna reflect this over the y-axis, I'd end up over here. And if I went down two, I'd only be here. So that one doesn't seem to work. I didn't get down far enough. I'm pretty sure that's the one that did not work. All right, we'll do a little bit of new stuff. We'll try a couple more proofs. Everybody turn to page 29 in there. And as we do, we put the date at the top, Tuesday, 11-24. You should be looking at this page right here. It should say Geometry, ASA, and AAS Practice. So what's nice about these beginning proofs is they've already given us some of the pieces that go into the statements and the reasons. Um, eventually we'll have to do it all on our own. But here's a given, here's a given. Let's mark them on the picture. N-O is congruent to Q-O. Already marked, but it usually won't be, so we mark it. Angle M is congruent to angle P. Already marked, but usually won't be. And <clears throat> when we write those, we write them each down on a line, and then the reason was given, because they told us that. So you always get your givens down first. And then what will always happen, whatever it asks you to prove will always be the last statement. And that's already there as well. So it gave us a hint here. The missing statement comes from this reason vertical angles are congruent. Do you see the vertical angles in the middle of this picture? And I was telling my class yesterday, you can call this M-O-N angle, angle one if you want, and you can call this P-O-Q angle, angle two if you want, just a little nickname, and you can say angle one is congruent to angle two. You don't have to be told that in a proof. If you ever see crisscross lines, you have vertical angles. So you can go ahead and say angle one is congruent to angle two, and the reason is vertical angles are congruent. So now remember, we usually need three pieces of information to prove two triangles congruent. And I think we have it because we ended up with a side here, an angle here, and another angle here. We just have to sort out the order. So why are the two triangles congruent? Is it SSS, ASA, AAS, one of those? Let's see. If I go this way, angle, side, I'd be skipping two, see that? I can't do that, so I have to go the other way. Let's see, angle, I can skip that one. Another angle, side. So it's A, A, S. Because that's the direction mm -hmm. I had to go to not skip more than one. So the answer is, angle angle side is congruent to angle angle side pretty soon you'll be able to do that whole proof from scratch by yourself and the bottom one we have this given information QTR which is this angle is congruent to STR which is this angle and then we have QRT, which is this angle, is congruent to angle SRT, which is this angle. So now we already had those as written in as givens for us, and the answer or the reason was given. Now, that's all they gave us for given information, and we're asked to prove this final line: two triangles are congruent. What is the missing piece? Up here, the missing piece was vertical angles. We don't have vertical angles here, but we do have something. These two triangles share this side. They share side RT, right? So we can say RT is congruent to itself. RT on one side is congruent to RT on the other side. When you share something, it's called reflexive. Now go ahead and try to pick the reason. Good luck.